We have four. Yay. I, should we go ahead and start? You think, Kathy, or wait? Usually, Commissioner that comes a little late, but I hate to. We've got people. Yeah, we've got people on the line. I think we should go ahead. Now that we have the chair here, we'll call the meeting <laughs> in order and get it. She's still uh, picking. Get it under. <laughs> yeah, I call the meeting to order. Okay. Well, are we calling the meeting to order? Do you need me to officially do that, or do you do that? I think you should do that. Okay. I will be happy to call the meeting to order. And it is what time? 11? 11. 11 on the dot. All right. 11 o'clock. Well, what time? Oh, 11 on and the dot. Do we have a that. quorum? It looks like it. And we do have a quorum, Madam Chair. Okay. And no one uh, communicated with me in advance that wanted to make a public comment. And no one has arrived. So uh, no public comment. So the next thing would be to approve the April 16th board. Right. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting? I'll make a motion. Zora? Yes. Okay. All Sorry. in favor? Uh, second. Montavious? Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we do have. So the uh, as we move to the next agenda item, which is the FY 2025 Community Arts Impact Grants. First of all, we want to welcome the applicants that are online listening to this meeting. Hello, thank you for coming. Uh, first of all, we want to give you a little background and explain how the scoring process works. The members of the Arts Council Advisory Board serve as grant reviewers for all Arts Council grants. Arts Council Board members were asked to identify any conflicts of interest with any applicant in advance of the meeting. If a conflict of interest was determined, the member recused themselves from scoring that particular application. Board members reviewed all the other applications and submitted their individual scores. Staff averaged all reviewer scores to determine a final score for each organization. A minimum score of 75 is required to be eligible for funding. Once all average scores are announced, the Arts Council Board will vote to approve the scores. However, final grant awards are contingent upon approval by the Board of County Commissioners. Grant amounts and agreements must be voted on by the Board of County Commissioners. We are going to read the scores, uh, the average scores here, and um, we ask that applicants uh, uh, we ask that applicants and attendants observe quietly during any discussion and not interrupt the proceedings. Any questions regarding scoring or other aspects of this process should be asked of Arts Council staff after conclusion of the meeting. So we will now announce the average scores of community art impact grantees for the FY 2025 fund raising uh, period in alphabetical order by the name of the organization. So we start with the Contemporary Art Music Project. Average score, 88.33. The next applicant, Dance Tampa Bay, Dance Rising Tampa Bay 2024. Average score, 91.22. The Down Syndrome Association of Tampa Bay, average score 91.56. The Gasparilla Music Foundation, Inc., average score 93.11. Heard em Say Youth Art Collective, average score 91.88. Hillsborough Community College, Average score, 92.75. Instruments for Life. Average score, 92.38. Kids with a Call, Inc. Average score, 87.78. 
Kitchen Table Literary Arts, average score 85.11. Live at the Tampa Bay Hotel, University of Tampa, average score 95. Mad Theater of Tampa, average score 88.11. Sun State Orchestral Program, average score 93.44. Tampa Realistic Artists, Inc., average score 93.78. USF Contemporary Art Museum, 96.56 is the average score. And I want to note that we have some first time applicants this round of who we are so happy to see and we hope that they're uh, with us today to uh, hear the good news because everyone in this cycle that applied qualified for funding. But again, the funding won't be finalized till after the Board of uh, County Commissioners meets. Um, I also want to commend all the Arts Council board members for their careful review and assessment of these applications. It's quite a job, <laughs> but they, they do it and their willingness to share their time and, and talents in, in, on behalf of the community's cultural sector is commendable. And we also want to also acknowledge the ongoing support of the Board of County Commissioners in providing funding for these grants. Mm -hmm. Is there any discussion that we would like to have regarding the scoring or uh, uh, any of the applicants? It's not necessary, but if anything pops in your head, it's perfectly fine. I'll say once again, review your grant application before you send it and have it done by a different person other than yourself. If you wrote it, make sure someone else looks at it. <laughs> Sometimes that can make a difference in your score and whether you, you know, whether you go forward. So I thought this group of grants were very well written. There were only a couple that should have grammatically Poof. should have had somebody <laughs> edit it or check the spelling. But you know, that uh, sometimes can uh, depend on how we all feel. If we're doing 20 grants as opposed to 12, that might be if we're at number 18 saying, I can't believe it. So please always review your grants and have it done by the uh, uh, someone else. Always good advice. We try to mention that in the grants for our shop also. <laughs> there was a nice diversity in yes. these groups, I thought, uh, you know, that we really tipped into a lot of different things with it. And uh, so we're especially happy for the first time applicants that apply. Mm -hmm. If there's no other discussion, uh, I think, Madam Chair, we're ready to vote uh, approve the scores. Uh, I'd like to have a motion, first of all, to approve the scores. Yes, sir. Oh, I'll move to approve the scores. I'll second. Oh. Okay, and all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion approved. Thank you. Uh, well, that concludes for our people online watching, our applicants. Uh, that concludes the discussion on the grants. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact our staff and we'll ha be happy to answer anything specific. And you're more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. Uh, and we appreciate your being here. And uh, that shows a lot of initiative and uh, really tips like Georgia gives is a, a good thing to do. So we always try to have some helpful hints as well. But everyone in this round was at, is their scores were all eligible for funding. So congratulations to all of our applicants. Thank you all. So the next thing uh, in other business, does everybody have a copy of uh, Kathy handed out the Professional Development for Artists Grant Program Guidelines. This will be the next grant that we'll be adjudicating. And uh, that's it's uh, July 8th is when it opens, it's July 8th. And this is 
we never seem to get as many applicants as you would think we would get for such, a, I think, a really good opportunity for uh, Dee, I'm going to call on you. I always do, but when Dee joined the board, uh, and you know, we were I was doing her orientation, and she got this grant, this very same grant, many years ago, and it went on. Would you just tell how it was a transformative uh, aspect in your career? Well, for me back then, it was for I wanted to buy an Amiga computer. And it was having that computer, I'd had the computer for about a year and had the opportunity to apply um, at Ringling for teaching, teaching position. And I really believe because I had the computer experience and they wanted to move more in that direction that I, you know, I got the job. So I really think that it was in big part because of that computer and that the experience that I gained. And you stayed at Ringling until you retired? Yes. So that's a, a really good success story. But we hear this for all the time for people who, who received this grant maybe 20 years ago. So it's it really is, uh, it's not a very difficult grant. Uh, so we want to have all of our board members help us in reaching mm -hmm. out to artists. I also want to commend Kathy Kathy is celebrating her one year anniversary with the Arts Council in June. She's mostly still smiling. <laughs> uh, but I will say, although we've gone through and redone the eligibility and a lot of the details on the uh, organizational grants fairly frequently, uh, we had really taken a hard look at this and we did. And I think we We've made some changes that will make it a little bit easier to apply and are more specific about things so people don't end up being ineligible because uh, we, we've simplified some of the reimbursement things because sometimes our, our art, individual artist grants, the, the reimbursement process, the bookkeeping aspect of this uh, is can be a little daunting, but it really shouldn't be. And it's a good practice if you want to apply for other grants as well. So Kathy's done a great job. And I wanted to get, have a copy, just give you a hard copy to take home today. So you can kind of look over it. Like for example, there's a, how they have to provide the supplementary materials. We're specific about that to make life easier on the grant reviewers. So you don't have something that you can't access on your computer with your technology. So we've really uh, drilled down into the very details. And I think, I'm hoping this makes this a less intimidating uh, possibility for first time grantees. But honestly, last year we did not have enough applicants to use all the budgeted money. And I think that's tragic. So I'd, I'd rather have the reverse uh, and, and have people come back the following year. So if you all would do what you know through your circles of influence to uh, reach out to artists, and this is you know either emerging or experienced artists, and please tell them they can always call the Arts Council. We really will hold their hand and walk them through it. But I think that, you know, this is really an improvement and I wanted you all to be aware of it. I thought it might be nice to read through this before you get the actual applications to review to sort of see what what they were told. So you kind of know what they what we asked of them mm -hmm. to give to you and hopefully you get it. <laughs> uh, Kathy, did you want to say anything else? <laughs> OK, but uh, anyway. I thought this would be a good thing to share and very timely because that is our last uh, grant uh, adjudication uh, for this fiscal year. Um, okay, uh, I don't have any other business. Does anybody else? Can I just make one request on the um, the online site that we go to? Neighborly? Neighborly, right. Can we have all the old stuff removed so that when 
new grants come up. It's just the grants that were supposed to be. That confused me. Yeah. Okay. So why I've got sports twice so long is I accidentally put back into it. Okay. You guys are seeing the previous grants that you scored and not just the current ones. Yes. Okay. But so they're they're showing up at the bottom of the page. Yeah, we yeah. didn't know that. That's really good feedback. We had no like, idea. This is this is a new system for us too. Because we don't see what you see. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll, go, I'll yeah. ask our representative to remove all of that. That would be so, great. Thank I you so thought, much. I thought when you kind of clicked in, you just clicked in and you saw. Yeah, we thought you guys were seeing the new stuff. Just no. Yeah. I actually like that because it gives me an opportunity to go back and take a look at what I've done with other well, groups, even though it's a different set of grants. But you know, every once in a while I keep, you know, I look at how everybody else scored everything for average scores. And I like going back in to see, well. I wonder why they did it differently or why I did it differently. So I look at it from that perspective and I think it's a good thing. Well, just keep in mind though that every one of the grant applications are different and right. that they're different parameters and they're different. You're looking, you have to look at them kind of independently because you can't compare, you shouldn't compare cultural development to community arts impact. No, no, no. But I'm looking at what I've done in the past compared to what we've done How in do terms you, of average you score. Measured? How yeah. you, you're trying to look for continuity. Yeah. In your what, did I, what did I see differently that everybody else did? If I graded it low, then maybe I missed something. So that helps me. So well, I, I look we, at it that way. <laughs> is there anything else? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Is there anything else that pops up that's weird that you're like, I, I need to, that we need to know? Now, because Gary you don't initially had trouble getting into these and yep. we didn't hear back from you. So we thought you you worked did. it out. No, it, I didn't work it out. I just took, waited a couple of days and everything worked itself out. <laughs> yeah, with Neighborly, sometimes if you hit refresh, it will clear itself up. It's not... And I'm not saying, but it's not the best. <laughs> okay. The only thing I encountered was a couple of times I'm reading the application and it would like shoot me out of it. Yeah. 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 It does yeah. that. To, it does that. Okay. It does do that. All right. And then I was like, okay, nope, where was I? Yeah. Yeah. Find it. Yeah. And he would suggest that you try to save often. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was just when I was reading it. So I wasn't necessarily scoring it actively at the time, but yeah, you just have to get back into it. That was the only thing. It's just mildly annoying. But yeah, you all same, get into it as, this morning. as reviewers. We don't see what you, we're administrators. So if you see something weird, call us or email us because we have no idea, because we don't see it. The look on Eileen's face when she just found out you all are seeing all of this, she's like, what? Yeah, it's, you know, we've, we've only had it for about a year. So there's like, things that we're just not even going to be cognizant of unless you guys are, are telling us because, you know, we're going through the process really for like the second time right now. So I guess it makes sense on some of the see the old things, but we didn't know that. Yeah, so, and you had to, I mean, on, on mine anyway, there were some that were buried, the current ones buried in with the older ones. Yeah, so that, that made I it. No. That wasn't like it on no, no. that. That's my, not what it was like. Mine. That wasn't like on mine. They were separated. Yeah, no, mine were. Oh, they were separated by date. Were, I mean, I had to check the date of each one before I oh. reviewed it. Oh. Right. Wow. That sounds really annoying. Yes. Yeah, we can probably talk to them and get that fixed. We just don't know. Please, you have a challenging <laughs> enough job without the system making it more difficult. Yes. Please give us a call for help <laughs> if you see anything odd on the system. And uh, we'll uh, we'll try and get with Neighborly to fix it. But we don't know what you're seeing, so you got to tell us. So was I the only one who had the double score, score yeah. which they never got back to me on either, because I went through and checked everybody's scores to make sure that the score was actually what was supposed to be. Yeah. And yours is the only one that, for some reason, I doubled. The specific one I, I put back into because after I scored it, nothing happened. But then I saw it at the bottom. I put back in to see if it was scored, and it was, and I just went on about okay. my business. So it's just a glitch. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> and it was only in that one, and then they never really got back to me as to like what. Yeah. The, Cause what? It must have been clear because otherwise, when I was going back, I also went through all the scoring and I was going back like, well, maybe I was still, you know, and then it will immediately rewrite whatever I changed. So it was not. 
same as a double, but it was rewriting the scores, right? Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. didn't save as a double. But Maybe so it must have whatever you did. overrode whatever I went back to mm -hmm. because you know once you read ten of them, then you know what is the level. Yeah. And so I did go back, and it will immediately overwrite. So it didn't save us to different. Uh, so you can go back after you score. Just and if you have problems getting back in, just mm -hmm. email me, and I can reopen it for you mm -hmm. on my end, on the administrator end. Um. But if you can't, for if like you hit submit and complete or whatever, and then you realize you want to go back in, I can open them up again. Okay. That's good to know. And generally, when you guys are doing your scoring, just just so you know, I try to keep my phone on and my computer around. So like if it's on in the evening and on the weekend, don't hesitate to to call because I understand that you're doing it as a separate thing. She's scary that way. <laughs> She's <laughs> omnipotent. She's like always on. <laughs> it's my prior training. <laughs> Old habits and hard and break. <laughs> well, welcome, Commissioner. Oh, thank you. We're glad to see you. One thing we talked about right before you came, does she have a copy of the guidelines? Yes. yes. Um, we uh, we're showing we've redone the professional development for artists grant. It opens up July 8th. We had a pitiful showing of people applying last year. So with all these people with no artists, we're trying to get people to apply because it's an easy grant and they get a piece of equipment or, you know, something. So if you have any artists in your spheres of influence, please encourage them or have them call us and we will talk them through. And Kathy's redone the these guidelines to make it easier. Do you have uh, a, like a Facebook post or something? Have what? A Facebook yeah. post that I could share or something? We have a... We, we're part of the... <laughs> no, I know, I know. But you're not allowed to do anything like separate, just like... That. Only if we, go, we, if we go through communications. And communications has been very helpful. Mm -hmm. and that would be it. If they would do something like they that. They do. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. They, they do do something. Okay. Um, I'll and try and travel like that. that. Text message mechanism where they can like let people know that our grants are available. So they usually do a few things for us when we scope it. Mm -hmm. we'll know that it's available. Mm -hmm. I think what we're trying to overcome is people hear about it, know about it, but I think a lot of the artists are like, I've never applied for a grant. Right. I can't it. Yeah. And it's it's like it's so easy. It's a good entry level grant. And learning how to do this then qualifies you. I was telling them the uh, uh, South Arts, the Southern Arts Federation, they have an individual artist grant later in July. And, you know, it's uh, you can easily apply to both, but it's just getting your foot in the water. Right. And that's why we've redone these to try and make it less intimidating. Uh but it's still a grant and it's still intimidating. But we also will give them a lot of personal and one on one. So if you know anybody, yeah. I think we've got a good crowd here between just the three of you. You know what an artist in Georgia. If if we had um if you could send us the the website, the link to that call, we could post it on our personal pages. Oh, you mean when they put the Facebook post up? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we can let you guys know. But yeah, that would be great. Mm -hmm. They they That's almost always idea. put something up whenever our grants open. Usually, like a newsroom or one of those videos that right. we've done, and some information that's out. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. yeah, and then we could maybe add some, or I could add some notes so other people might want to like. This is a, this is a good you know first step for you. Yeah. Right, and, and communications has done some wonderful stories on our individual artists, uh, which is has been great. So um, they they're really fabulous to work with. But unlike before, we don't have our own Facebook page and things, so we have to go through those channels. But I really think it's more a fact of the. Uh, uh, just intimidation factor, and I'd like to figure out a way to break through that uh, if possible. So thank you all for helping us with that. Uh, that's really everything on the agenda. Anything else anybody would like to? I would like to ask uh, Pat, when we present this to the uh, to the council, I mean the commissioners, when 
Will that be approved? Is it going to be in July or August? When it will be when they October. do October. October will be after the first of October right, so because we don't even have the budget. That's for what I'm thinking. The new fiscal year starts in October, and the exact October one date it depends, you know, on the agenda. You know, we but we will start putting all of the grants on the agenda. So they'll be discussing this when. When will the commissioners be discussing the actual grants, reviewing them? And I don't think they really do as much as it'll they don't. probably be something, right? It, Martine, it's, it's just usually on consent. It's a, a consent agenda item. Okay. And it's um, according to the form, they can, and it's the name of the organization okay. and the amount, and they approve it. Right. All well, my concern was other commissioners being against supporting the arts. And would that be when the consent agenda comes up and then they would start putting their flags up? Uh, the flagging and all that stuff happens in July. So okay, the budget is passed in September. So that's all coming up now. Okay. Um, and then um, I'm glad you could answer that question, Martine, because I have yeah. Yeah. Um, about October. So, um, I mean, I don't, but it's kind of, there's like a, thing now that the staff has asked them to hold off on that, you know, for so for the upcoming year that, you know, they I'm, I'm they're probably chomping at the bit now for 25 to try to make things because the staff just said we can't do all this stuff that you're asking and and have organizations hold to it. I mean, I was surprised that there were ones that didn't do 990s or I mean, it'll be different because you're under the county now. So I don't know, but um, you know, they they intend uh, to do things for next year. So that would be like as this July comes. I can't tell you when. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. They just throw bombs. They don't even put their stuff on the agenda. They just they do off the agenda items, which means our regular agenda it doesn't come out. They can do which comes out on. Friday, usually we get a late Friday uh, for the next following Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But then what happens is they add things on Friday, but the agenda is approved on Thursday and it goes out to us on Friday. So then we don't get the add-ons until Monday and they can add on as late as Monday. And then um, after that, they need a super majority to allow the discussion to go forward. But sometimes they have that, you know, um, but I mean, and then they just throw, it's just unbelievable, really, because I never quite, they have an obscure title. They won't tell staff even what it is. No one knows to be able to communicate with us. They do backup, which they don't include. That's like this elaborate. So I can't, it's, uh, we just have to keep watching. <laughs> this agenda item that we have to put forward, and Eileen does this, it, it goes through channel. It's an e-agenda and the first thing, you know, it has to be approved by the county attorney before we even get, and that requires two weeks. For the Our attorney asks for five business days. Yeah, five business days. And then after that, you know, I sign it, uh, Ron Barton, my signs it, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, budgeting office has to sign it. Um, and then Tom Fessler has to sign it. And so it's going through channels and all of that has to happen before it can go on the agenda. And sometimes administration will just not think it's good timing. Maybe there's too much similar. I mean, they have the reasons. If they say this isn't a good timing, we listen to them. Right, so, right. Yeah, I too. <laughs> so we we don't have a lot of control over mm -hmm. this process. But as I understand it, it can't happen until the new fiscal year. When I, but what I was outlining more was like processes that come during. I didn't want to mislead you because I mean mm -hmm. you're outlining what specifically comes with this, but the budget is coming now in July and September are final budget hearings and stuff like that. So those things are coming up and I don't know if they could or what is maybe planned during all of this preliminaries. The final budget is approved in September and there's two different meetings uh, to approve that. And we have public hearing and hardly 
in all the years. And I used to go sometimes as a citizen and be the only person for for even the county budget, just to, mm-hmm. to give some feedback. You know, I, I've been there before where there's been like three people. Um, and so I and I don't know. I don't, you know, we'll we'll just have to see. But I mean, basic the basic thing is, of course, you have to get so four votes and you probably have three <laughs> and and you and then one you know you'll it, it, clearly you'll since budget is approved september this is why it has to be after october 1st but in answer yeah. to your question we don't know exactly okay. when it will happen there are a lot of moving forward right. our goal is to have it happen as quickly as possible mm-hmm. so that we can get a a grant agreement because then you have to get the grant after they vote on it you have to get the grant agreement to the then it comes back someone with the county has to sign it before it's official before it's really a done deal Mm -hmm. and so for community arts impact the date of the grant period it begins october uh sorry november November November. 1st Mm -hmm. so there's a little time to get that done Cultural development starts October 1st. Yeah. So what we will, you know, so we we tell them just you can go ahead and spend money, but understand that it's not a done deal and we can't reimburse you until we have the grant agreement. So but if they have to spend something (laughs) for the grant and then it's kind of retroactive when it is but cultural development is operational and they're gonna spend that whether they get this grant or not. Right. If it's, it's it's project based, they shouldn't spend the money until they know for sure. It's but, just that I think that everybody needs to be aware of it and all the organizations need to be aware to be oh, an I advocate. Tell you. Absolutely I tell you. be an advocate and, and be aware of what's going on. It's a great point. The yeah. advocacy is important. Yeah. Right. Because if the money isn't found in that July to September period the commissioner is talking about, like there won't be an agenda, I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll be. I always tell them, don't don't count your, you know, don't count anything until I tell you it's been approved by the paper. Right. But. So what you're saying is that the monies that we've that we're looking at, somebody is actually putting that into the budget proposal at this point. The recommended budget. Yes. Yeah, recommended so that's budget. already there. Sure. Now it's a matter of going through the hoops. And what's what we have projected is exactly the same as this year for grants, no mm-hmm. different. So it's the same amount. So, but we can't tell anybody the amount of their grant award until so we award. we certainly yeah. know that. Um, and honestly, for the last all the years I've been a commissioner before this, before last year, and probably for decades before, no one ever touched it. Whatever the staff recommended just moved forward, and no one ever did anything. But you know, because it's such a small amount anyway. Yeah. yeah. Right. But even even with like any of the arts, even the bigger ones or any, there was just never, in fact, except to maybe increase um if they could to add to it. So it's just like never nobody ever did that fight, you know. But um, thank you. Well, while we're talking about advocacy, this is a little premature. Uh, but you know, we get state funding license plate funding which is from the if you buy an arts license plate we get a percentage of that and we can't ever count on how much it's going to be but a lot of people do it you know so it's around twenty thousand dollars or something and we're very restricted as what we can spend this for it has to be awareness i mean it can't be salaries it can't be grants it can't you know we can't re-grant it they're they're very tight regulations and we have to do an affidavit every year. But hmm. we Eileen and I were talking about, you know, ways to spend the money that would really be a benefit that would, you know, and we've done it for publications and that. But she's going to reach out to visit Tampa Bay and see if we can get <coughs> a marketing campaign with them sort of for arts mm-hmm. advocacy. Mm-hmm. So that's awareness but yet we can use the state money for it. So we're not using county money for it. So <laughs> anyway, I we are very aware mm-hmm. that, you know, last year after the vote, all the arts people came out leaving the county and they're coming over there. We did it. We want, and I'm like, no, you don't understand. We have to be vigilant. 
we have to keep messaging. This mm -hmm. isn't over. And I'm afraid that there is just human nature to sort of think, oh, well, we, we dodged that bullet, now let's move It's forward. like our Department of State grants right now. Uh, if, as far as I know, as of yesterday, the governor has still has not signed the budget for it. That's awful. It's still, uh, two years ago, he waited till June 28th to sign. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting, we're hoping that... Um, and the art project, yeah. which was the $25,000 of mm -hmm. cut. Oh, yeah, it's God. like we're all all organizations are just waiting. I think there's like I saw the list the other day, you know, like it's yeah. statewide. We now have the lowest paid teachers in the nation. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And the most banned <laughs> books with like 1,400 banned books in next to us is Wisconsin with like less than 500 banned books. <laughs> but I think the best thing we can do is keep our messaging consistent. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, Stay well, calm and carry on. And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, I, I do think that what the communications department is doing with these videos is I'm not... I don't know how people necessarily find out about it if they don't know. I'm, I'm not sure how they get to it, but they're they're excellent advocacy pieces and the, the production value is wonderful. And they should be part of the Busy Tampa Bay uh, website because they are telling the story of the institutions. I've seen a couple of them that you did in TMA and I think that you should offer that to visit mm -hmm. Tampa Bay because that's an interesting I mean, if I if if people <laughs> plan a trip, of course the beach is number one. But then they start to look further, like mm -hmm. what we can do. It's beaches and sports—that's really what they promote. Well, <laughs> yes, but I think that they do have a pretty good visibility. They do have these oh, yeah. target groups. We need to be Canada part of it. And in Midwest, and so if you can strike a deal to. Kind of. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so this it, has to go through communication. Well, actually, that's not what I was about to say. I was about to say that Visit Tampa Bay has a very strong like brand identity of their own. So I honestly doubt they would want to use these videos um, because it does not look like them. And their branding is so visible. Like I was down in Miami recently. I saw the more new it was them immediately. Like advertising to come to Tampa. Um, so just because of that, I'm not sure they would want to like take a full sale and use these, but they do have good arts videos of their own. Like I sit on their marketing committee. I've seen a lot of their collateral. That's why I'm so familiar mm -hmm. with it. And so what I'm hoping we could do is kind of offer them some funds to run more specific arts advertising campaigns using some of the stuff that they've already even produced. Or do some other cool stuff like they recently had this like dance event in downtown Tampa where the, you know, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So they do really cool, awesome stuff. And I feel like if we could just help kind of Sound live yeah, in that world with Sound them. Because wife is a was a dancer. Oh, she's, okay. dance, she's one of the grand chiefs. And yeah. we need to, you know, I think as the Arts Council to create alliance with her, maybe we can invite her on the board. Uh, I, and that will, you know, just not to go directly, just the official way, but kind of uh, give her a little more agenda in the in the arts in general. Then I think that it will, you know, how it plays with the husband and wife, you know, who is making the decisions. <laughs> I mean, you, maybe if we're working with business, they can be kind of looped into the process as well. Um, so I, th I think that there's just opportunity there to do yeah. something kind of maybe interesting. And they are getting, like, they are one of the grants for new nonprofit that you guys support. Yeah. So well, great. So even better to invite her to be even more. The um, Tampa... I think it's the Tampa Ballet out of the Ebor. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Tampa, it's Tampa. Tampa. Like five years ago, I got invited to go there, and I went there, and I, you know, thought it was incredible. They did it, Ebor City Cigar uh, uh, Factory, yeah, like ballet, and I just really couldn't even believe it. It was okay attended. It was at the, it, it was at HCC, and it was Saturday night, whatever. But um, like, uh, you know, I got offered a ticket, so I just went and. Then afterwards, I was like, whoa, 
or how are you all funded and all this stuff. I couldn't even talk. Nobody there even knew that like I had come and I was a commissioner and no one had talked to me and I couldn't even find anybody that to talk to like afterwards or anything. And I made some inquiries, but then I, on my flag items, I just said, you know, I came in and I just said, look, I want to do $10,000 for the uh, Tampa Ballet. And Mike Merrill, and who was not ever excited about my flag items and she's like, no matter what, whatever. But and then he goes, My sister's a ballerina. <laughs> and I got, he was the county administrator. And I was like, really? Well, okay. So yeah, and he was like all about it. So then after that, I um uh, like three years later, Santiago came to me and he said, You have like the biggest fans ever. And from and I go, well, tell me about them. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then he said, the Tampa Ballet loves you. And I was like, I never even, I don't think I ever even heard from them or I never even got, and each year I just make sure that they like got, obviously I said, what about that Tampa Ballet? You know, like what? And I, I couldn't even, I had trouble getting information or anything, but they are now doing apparently super well and and t visit tampa bay is really into them and that's when um he told santiago said my wife did ballet and they were and they and he was like really he said let me introduce you and he brought me over in an event to introduce me and the woman was uh incredibly nice and appreciative and um and she's i think she said she told me i said i was surprised that I like really wanted to meet them or have them come to the house or something. But I think something like she was like intimidated by that or thought she didn't think she should do that or something. <laughs> you know? So um, it was just really funny. But so I mentioned that we had some newbies with this. So um, Dance Tampa Bay, Dance Rising Tampa Bay. Is that Santiago's one? Yes. 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 Yes, uh, that's a new one. Down Syndrome Association, Kids with a Call, Kitchen Table Literary Arts. I think they're going to be absolutely thrilled. This will be their first grand. Uh, wow. Mad Theater of Tampa. And Kathy beat that one to death. She said, you really need to be applying for this. She wouldn't leave them alone. So they applied for it. Uh, and what about Sarasota Orchestral? Is this Sarasota State? No. Sarasota State. They were not. They applied last year for CDG and didn't get it, but they were CAIG the year. Okay. Okay. So they were not. But that's quite a number of first timers. And I think it's, you know, that's. It no, just, there's, 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 uh, Dance Tampa Bay. Down Syndrome. Mm -hmm. Kids with a Call. Mm -hmm. Kitchen Table Literary Arts and Mad Theater. That's cool. I, I should also mention some of these Kitchen Table Literary Arts, uh, Dance Tampa Bay, applied either for the Special Events Partnership Grant or for Cultural Development. And I had conversations with them about, you know, this is probably a better fit for your first time out. And... Um, I mean, they were welcome to apply, but I think they made the right choice for just where they are in the process. And they can grow into those other grants. Uh, we've seen that happen when people start out with CAIG. So the problem in these small organizations is that they typically are artists and it takes a couple of years until they get an administrator on. And so that's why they they don't know. Oh, no, I know. Somebody with a political background is here. We are all oh, dancers. Right. We even want to talk to us, right? And, so right. <laughs> and then once they kind of a higher development person or higher a communication person, then they kind of mature about the politics right. and social relationships. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I mean. Paula, it was just really interesting. Is a dancer to me. <laughs> and teaches dance at USA. Right, exactly. So she, Paula. Paula, yes, Paula Nunes. They're so doing wonderful see, work. They, they, they oh, have yeah. been the scene for over 10 years, right? right? And now we finally recognize the, the, the project. But they all start as a group of artists. Mm -hmm. And they don't know about the 
how you do a press release like press release yeah nobody cares about our per <laughs> the performance right so the the whole mindset of these small institutions if we give them a little bit of help changed during three five years mm -hmm. it's something very different and then they know that you know, being friends with politicians, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just, I, I figured they were just too busy doing their art and doing it, you know, doing it. I was just glad to, you know, whatever. It was fine with me, but I just, I kind of was, uh, I wanted to, like, say, oh, you could probably get some more help. <laughs> Maybe that were, I just didn't even know what their situation was, really. I just didn't. Uh, and I what you're it. saying is absolutely the history of arts, especially community arts in the United States going back to the 1960s. A group of visual artists start a something, and then a group of actors start a little theater, and, they, and then they don't have the knowledge to do the day to day and uh, but uh, it was, you know, so a lot of uh, funding. I think that's the reason the NEA was formed, because in the 60s, that was, and they knew that if you did professionalize the industry, it was not going to survive. So that's when that influx and the easy money for the arts in the 60s came because nobody knew what they were doing because they just loved that art form and they were doing it and, you know, dedicated. Right. But they didn't have the development skills and the communication and right. building a website and, and uh, sending out press releases is kind of an afterthought for an artist, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, that's what happened in the ballet exactly. And now they are there. They have their professional uh, art administrators. To and we do do workshops for organizations. We did one for individual artists recently for, I know, how to go about getting grants, what you need to do before you apply for a grant and all of that. I can't say that our uh, help things, we've done one on 990 and why you should be, you know, all these, they just aren't always terribly well attended, but we're trying to help them you know, get up, but it's, you know, and usually more sign up than attend. I think they, you know, comes time to get on there and they go, oh, I don't have time to do that today. But uh, we uh, we do try and get helpful information out to help them in this transition from being all volunteer to having a little bit more professionalized organization. The, um, and the other thing not to, but... Uh, we did only get four. I didn't realize that. We only got four signatures for the uh, Nika Jones so that you couldn't come to the Kathy one. Mm -hmm. I, I looked into it after that because I was I didn't even know. I, I, I thought and, that's what we're doing. Right. Yeah, um, and I didn't even know because she didn't, I don't know why, but we didn't communicate about it. She just She's like, oh, she handles it, you know. So. Well, she she's handling, we're handling it. So, yeah. And, <laughs> but I think the, it may have just happened too when that. The, the uh, situation so. is um, commissioners, A, Raquel called me and Nikita Jones, you know, the artist that we did this way, who's so amazing, done the time. Unbelievable. Makes, like, <laughs> cover everything. Um, wanted to give her a commendation. And there's a new rule. And if uh, what it used in, to be that. If four commissioners signed anything, then you could present it in the boardroom. And there, we used to not have a limit. I actually wanted to do the limit because certain commissioners would do like, uh, like take up all the spaces and everything. And, you know, it was just kind of crazy that way. But uh, anyway, um, so then so it used to be, though, four signatures, like gay pride or something, which we did in the boardroom for several years, as long as you got four signatures and we used to get six actually all the time but uh then they changed the rule to be you must get six signatures and three i mean there's three people that i think automatically won't sign my stuff so <laughs> uh, anything i do um so we're looking for still looking for another opportunity i wanted to you know uh, so you can get if you get four you can get a proclamation if you get three you can't get one even you know like from the board before you can get it but you have to present it outside somewhere you can't present it in the boardroom and so we're looking for a good opportunity 
Would there be a lot of people that would be interested in this? So if any of you know of something that comes up. Um, she was just, uh, I was, uh, it was just recognition for her, uh, yeah. you know, for her work and for, you know, I mean, cover of Time magazine. Washington Post. She said something. Be now that she's one of our like, arts grants. She got the grant a couple you know? of years ago. And she got it. Yeah. She got a new computer, D. <laughs> <laughs> no, she is. She is exhibiting in Europe. She yeah. Yeah, no, she's amazing. Yeah. Oh. No, I mean, it's like it, just to let yeah. us understand in our community that this, like, yeah. incredible person's among us and let well, us acclaim <laughs> that, you know. Eileen and I are still working since we can't do it at the board. Uh, I'd like to find a little bit bigger group to have this recognition than just a board meeting. So yeah. we're looking for something artsy that we can maybe tack this on mm -hmm. to. So if you all think of anything, let us know. Uh, you know, what is, I've been to several like really big art yes. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll keep working on it, Commissioner, and we'll get something together. I mean, it's just, I mean, I because I think she appreciated it so much, and yeah. thank you for doing this. No, I just think it's like I just ne I honestly didn't imagine that. I, uh, you know, I really didn't. We'll we'll, we'll start really putting our heads together yeah. now that we know you definitely can't do it there. Uh. So, anything else? Anybody's got? It? <laughs> We had a quorum. We got the grants uh, scores passed, and we'll uh, we'll keep you in touch about the uh, individual artist things coming in as they happen. Uh, okay. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? We'll move to adjourn. Okay. Anyone second it? Okay. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.